Good morning, everybody. So, it is, I mean, I think it's like right at five in the morning, and we are at a barbecue competition. I'm not really a barbecue guy, but I thought I'd give you a little rundown. Got the Black Series, we got the smoker, the brisket. Yeah, my old man is a, this is his dream to do a barbecue competition, so. I'm here as the, the helper mate. But, uh, so I wanted to talk to you this morning that um, I watched a video where Gray Note, um, you guys should check his channel out. He's he's really good. Um, he's, he's got a lot of common sense. He, he found me and then I started watching him as well. And, and we, you know, we're great information. He helped us out with the tourniquet side of it where I thought I could make a tourniquet out of a belt, especially a gun belt. He absolutely showed me that I couldn't. And so what I wanted to talk to you today about was so many of us as, as a prepper, I guess, foresee a time coming very fast that we could see a second civil war, a revolution, uh, without rule of law, um, just just whatever it is that you expect, you know. I I've told you in some previous videos that I was in a pretty much without rule of law martial law situation earlier this year or earlier last year for Hurricane Michael in Florida when I went down there to do relief work, and um, so you know you never know when you're going to find yourself in this situation. You never know if it's going to be a long term situation or a short term situation. Um, but so I thought I'd talk to you about this and what I want to talk about is the actual reality. Um, so I don't care which one you think is going to happen. That's, that's not important to me. What's important to me is whether or not you, that you think something's going to happen and, and you're not sure what it is. So all of it leads to the possibility of a self-defense situation with you and your weapons in your family. So here's what I want to, I want to give you, I would listen to him and he gives you a, a, a perfect example of, of training um, and why the training side of it is so important, is absolutely critical. So I thought I would just give you a, a piece of my story as to why training is so critical. So um, I started off in law enforcement and my law enforcement training was uh, I would say it's the absolute bare minimum that it takes to be able to make it. And that is just basically to, if you are in, encountered in a gunfight, to be able to get your gun out and, and fire at somebody and hit them center mass twice, right? Um, and so what I learned in, in that portion of the training was, just on my own, that it wasn't, that part of the training wasn't sufficient enough to keep me alive in the event that somebody actually wanted me. So against the law-abiding law citizen, that training is probably marginally sufficient. But against the person who is hell-bent on actually hurting you, that is not okay, right? That is That will just get you killed. Um, which is why you see a lot of cops are, unfortunately, and I'm, and I'm not talking trash on them, but but they're easy targets. You know, we all are. We're, everybody's an easy target right now. Um, cops especially. They're expecting law-abiding citizens, and then they, they go in and they, they deal with the, the extremely evil every once in a while. You know, that's based on regions, too. Um, but my, my training wasn't sufficient, so I, I was seeking out more training. And so then I, I quit my career in law enforcement, and I went on to some other things. And sorry, we're going to walk and talk. I gotta make sure my camper's all set up. So, quit my career in law enforcement, went on to other things, and I started shooting with a with an ex team guy. And for those of you who don't know, team guys are Navy SEALs, and this guy's a friend of mine, and he's great. And I, I was also shooting competition a lot, um, and shooting very fast. So you know, I was really practicing being able to get my rifle up, hit center mass 15 times in two seconds. I could do it. I was fast. I mean, I had my gun set up fast. I had my training set up fast and um, I was good at it. And I, and I remember going with him the very first time and we both shot and I shot as fast as him and I hit the target as good as him and I was as accurate as him. And I remember thinking to myself, 
you know, and this is just me being, just telling you the truth. I remember thinking to myself, well, crap, I got it. I'm good. And then what I missed on was while I was standing static, he never stopped moving. And so he told me probably one of the most valuable lessons that I could ever imagine learning. And that was a static target is a dead target. So when I started moving, if you, if you could ever have the ability to shoot with a team guy, I promise you'll find that they never stop moving. They don't ever just sit there, pull their gun out, shoot two, clear left and right. That's, that's training to get you on the, on the static range good. They don't ever do that. They never, ever, ever stop moving. So, and, and, and they're not moving slow. They're moving very swiftly. And so I started, I started moving very swiftly with him and my, my groups and my accuracy went to roughly five times worse than what it initially was. And so I got to thinking, this is a horrible idea. Um, I, I, I had shoot, but I didn't have move. So I spent the next two years learning to shoot and move. So when I'm on the range, yes, if I'm, if I'm teaching somebody, I'll stay static. But if I'm on the range practicing for myself, I don't ever stop moving. I, maybe when I'm very first making sure that I'm back in tune, I'll, I'll just stand there. But for everything else I do, I move and I move swiftly. And I try to find a way to make myself break where I, I'm purposely pushing myself harder than I can go. And that's my failure point. And then I train to that. And I, I just keep going and keep going and keep going, right? So that's the only way to get better. And then I learned, okay? So fast forward, I learned then how to shoot and move, but I didn't learn how to communicate. And you gotta learn that with a team. And so most of the time that you can get a training group together where you're being serious and learning to shoot, move, and communicate, you're learning that with um, a, a class, um, a, a legitimate class with a legitimate instructor that has done it and has taught it before. So that's what's really important right now is that you can't get that on your own. That's where you actually have to train with other people and with an instructor who knows what they're doing um, to be able to teach you this. And, and I'm not that guy. I'm not qualified to do that. Uh, I can teach you the basics. I can teach you to shoot and I can teach you to move. But shoot, move, communicate, have a mission in mind, work with a team. Um, I'm still a very novice in that area. And that's just me being dead honest. But in the event of, you know, um, without rule of law, a SHTF situation, or hey, maybe you wanna go work on the border with some guys. Maybe you wanna go down there with one of those local groups and, and defend the border and help out. Well, look, if you can't do those basic things, shoot, move, and communicate, you can have your line one, line two, and line three gear, and it doesn't matter, right? You can have the best gear, and it doesn't matter. Um, so, I think it's critical, critical that you don't just have the shoot. You have the shoot, move, and communicate. And the only way to do that is to actually have somebody there who can instruct you and teach you. Then after you have that, go home and practice it. And that's just something that uh, you can't duplicate on your own. I watched a video where they said um, people are watching videos of tactical instructors, uh, Garan Thumb, Travis Haley, Chris Costa, those guys. And then they go home and they think that they know how to do that. And I, you know, there was a time I was that guy. I remember watching the Magpul Dynamics videos with uh, Travis Haley and Chris Costa. And then I'd go out and practice that. You know, in my mind, I thought that I knew it. When I went out and practiced it, I knew that I didn't know it. And then when I went to a real class with a real instructor, I realized, you know, I, I had formed some bad habits. So that's what I wanna encourage you guys today is you, there is no other way. It's not an option that you have to have training to learn to shoot, move, and communicate. Because on your own, on a square range, you can probably teach yourself to shoot. Um, I'm not sure you can teach yourself to, sh to move and shoot, maybe. But move, shoot, and communicate, you can't teach that to yourself. Um, unless, of course, you were a gunfighter in the military. But uh, so guys, that's a, that's a key role. And, and to think that you can do it and not have done it, I promise you can't. You will default to 
your highest level of training. So if your highest level of training is on a square range, that's what you'll default to. If your highest level of training is on a square range and static, you're gonna stand there in a gunfight and the guy who can shoot and move is gonna kill you. Anyway guys, ponder on it.